sex outside of marriage is one of those taboo topics that a lot of people either don't talk about or when they talk about it, they tend to be a little bit kooky when they talk about it, right? Um, And I want to just sort of just demystify some of the things that you may have heard about premarital sex before marriage. That's redundant. Premarital sex. Um, And I want to tell you from a Christian perspective. Now, number one, I'll be honest with you all. I didn't wait till I was married to have sex. I didn't wait at all. My desire was to, however, because I had issues with issues with the with rejection, uh, had low self esteem, um, sex um, became a a convenient ex- escape, um, if you will. Uh, made me feel better about myself. It. Uh, gave me a sense of affirmation that I was looking for. And that's the reason that a lot of you all, even as Christians, are struggling with premarital sex. It's not just the act itself. It's because of what the actual act represents to you. Some of you all have been rejected. Some of you all are hurt. Some of you all have... Various issues, right? That you know, I'm not gonna go into because I'm gonna make it a short video. But and you're asking, you're praying, well, God, why do I keep finding myself falling to premarital sex? Well, number one, you're falling to it primarily because of a spirit of rejection. What do I mean by a spirit of rejection? Well, simply this: many of you guys have been rejected in the womb, meaning that maybe your mother spoke something over you, spoke something over you in the womb. She could have said something like, you know, I wish I had a boy and here you are a girl, or I wish I had a girl and here you are a boy. Uh, It could have been something as easy as your father not being in your home. It could have been something as easy as claiming over you that you know, I, you know, you're nothing. You're you're just like your no good father. So you've gotten wicked, negative proclamations spoken over you, and those wicked, negative proclamations has enabled a spirit of rejection to come in. And because you have that spirit of rejection, you've acted out sexually uh, due to it, right? And I say this because, as you know, my on my channel, I talk a lot about spiritual warfare, and I talk about how spiritual warfare, in my estimation, plays a major role in why people act out. You know, the Bible says that we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but principalities and powers, right? And I truly believe that. So, number one, many of you all are dealing with a spirit of rejection. Number two, many of you all are dealing with a spirit of shame. Because of the rejection, because of the shame, you're trying to, you, the rejection has allowed shame to come in. And that shame has come in to a demon grouping, if you will, with rejection. And if you don't understand demon groupings, uh, I encourage you to go get pigs in a parlor. A, a very popular book on deliverance ministry by Frank and Ida Mae Hammond. It talks about demon groupings. And so the spirit of rejection has paired up with shame in your life. And that shame is exact as, as amplified the rejection in your life and do the dad. You've essentially used sex as a placeholder to feel better about yourself. It's not that many of you all don't love God or you don't love Christ. Is just that um, you cannot, it's hard for you to disconnect the feeling that you're getting from sex than trying to connect to God and getting the feeling, if you will, through him through faith. Because when you connect to God, you're not connected to him via a feeling. Sure, you can get the goosebumps, you can get into his presence and cry. I'm not saying those things, 
but primarily we don't connect to God through our feelings. We connect through him via faith. And through connecting to him primarily through faith, then ultimately the feeling from that connection comes into play. So like when I get into his presence, I'm going out there and I'm by act of my faith connecting to this being, God, my father, that I cannot see. But through that connection, through my decision to connect to, to a being that I cannot see through faith, through my belief that when I'm speaking to him, he exists, through my belief that when I'm worshiping him, that he exists, then what ends up happening, he lavishes me with his presence. And that presence automatically, in many instances, makes me cry. It makes me have, it makes me full of joy. That's why it says his presence is fullness of joy. Many of you all have used sex as that, right? And because you've, 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 you've uh, relegated yourself to sex, then it's harder for God to operate in your life because in essence, sex has become your God. And that's another reason why many of you are bound by premarital sex and you can't understand it and you want to stop it. But folks, I just want to give you a couple of brief tips on why you're dealing with it, what you need to do to overcome it. Now, briefly, what did you do to overcome it? You seek the Lord with your whole heart. You pray to him. You cry to him. You fast. You pray. You seek to him. You do what I just said earlier. You um, you come to him even when you don't feel like it and you force yourself to worship him. You force yourself to pray to him. You force yourself to connect to him on a, on a level that you don't even understand. And then over time, he'll lavish himself with more of his presence. And his presence is where you want to be because in his presence is where you have the power, the strength to overcome any obstacle in your life. This is your boy Dom. For more in-depth in tips and strategies, head on over to www.pornaddictshelp.com www.pornaddictshelp.com If you want a 20-minute uh, consultation, head over to pornaddictshelp.com forward slash chat Porn, pornaddictshelp.com forward slash chat. I right, take care. Peace.